Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Alicia. In today's video, we are going to go over some of the books that will be released in the month of April by Latina and Latino authors. Let's get into the video. This is a new series that I will be featuring on my channel every single month where we talk about the books that will be published by Latinx, Latina, Latino, and Latina authors the following month. I did start off with March Latinx book releases, so if you want to go ahead and check that out, I will link it down below. Now that particular video I feel was a little bit chaotic, so I do want to add some structure to the videos moving forward. So I will leave timestamps down below, that way you can go ahead and click around as you'd like. I will be dividing up the video into two separate categories, the adult section and the young adult section. And then after that, I will be going by publication date. So we'll start off with adult books in publication order and then move on to young adult books in publication order. The intention behind these videos is to put these books on your radar. And as we go along through these videos, I will also let you know which books I am personally interested in checking out. So with that, let's jump into the adult books that will be published in April. I have one book for you that will be published on April 4th of 2023. That is Ana Maria and the Fox. This is by Liana de la Rosa. It is 352 pages. It will be published by Berkeley, which is an imprint of Penguin Random House, and it is an adult historical romance book that takes place in the 1860s during the French occupation of Mexico. In this particular book, our two love interests are Ana Maria Luna Valdez and also Gideon Fox. And it says that it is a forbidden love between a Mexican heiress and a shrewd British politician. So the premise of this is that Ana Maria and her sisters are sent abroad to Britain to seek refuge during the French occupation of Mexico. Here she meets a man called Gideon Fox, who is a politician. It turns out he is a member of parliament, and Gideon is on the cusp of securing votes in order to enact a measure that will abolish the Atlantic slave trade. We love a man who fights for the rights of others. So from what I can gather from the synopsis, Ana Maria gets in a little bit of trouble while she's abroad and Gideon helps her out. Now, I haven't read anything by Liana de la Rosa, but she seems to be a prolific historical fiction or historical romance writer. Personally, I don't read a lot of historical romance, but it seems like an interesting one to check out. The only adult book that I have for you that will be published on April 11th is Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. This is 460 pages long, 60, 416 pages long. It will be published by Grand Central Publishing, and this is a contemporary romance book. Now, I've actually already read this book. I did receive an advanced reader copy through NetGalley, and I talked about it during my March mid-month wrap-up, so I'll link the video down below in case you want my in-depth thoughts. But to give you a sense of what this is about, this involves a fake dating scenario between two ER doctors. I know a lot of people are comparing it to Grey's Anatomy, which I can understand in that they are ER doctors, but a lot of the romance happens outside of the hospital. I mean, they do write really cute letters to each other for the first half of the book, but really it's more about their relationships and their struggles and their really good chemistry. That's one thing I will say. They have really, really good chemistry. We also have a Latina main character. She is Salvadorian and she is just finalizing her divorce. She also has a kid brother who has renal and stage disease and is in need of a kid. So she's in this point in her life where she's dealing with a lot of things. On the other hand, we have Jacob who is our main love interest and he is dealing with social anxiety and also with the fallout after his previous girlfriend got engaged to his little brother. I really love the heavy topics that were covered in this book, and I really liked the chemistry between these two characters. One other thing that I will mention, it is more of a closed door romance for anybody that wanted to know. I lied, there is one book that I forgot to mention, and it's funny because I'm actually currently reading it, and that is The Cuban Heiress by Chanel Clayton. This will also be published April 11th of 2023. It is 304 pages long, 
It's also being published by Berkeley, and this is categorized as women's fiction on the Penguin Random House website, but it's really a historical fiction novel that is set in the 1930s. In particular, it is set on a luxury cruise ship that is sailing from the United States to Havana, Cuba. I haven't read enough of the books to give you insights or thoughts. I just started it last night, right before falling asleep. I think I got two chapters in. I will say that if you have read other works by Chanel Clayton, I mean I really like her writing style and it only gets better and better and better. So in this one we are actually following two women who are on board of this ship. The first one is Elena Palacio and she is a dead woman and she has boarded the cruise ship in order to get revenge. Now the second person that we are following is Catherine Dohan. She is this wealthy woman enjoying the luxuries of her life. Her and her fiance are on this cruise ship heading to Havana. However, it turns out that Catherine lied to everybody and she doesn't really come from the wealthy roots that she made everybody believe. I don't know if these two women's lives are going to cross and interact, but either way, I think it's going to be a really, really good book with a lot of secrets some action and I just hope that I love it as much as I loved The Most Beautiful Girl in Cuba. I have one adult book that will be published on April 18th of 2023 and that is going to be The Haunting of Alejandra by V. Castro. This is at 272 pages and it will be published by Del Rey which is an imprint of Penguin Random House that focuses on publishing sci-fi and fantasy stories. So for the genre I'm a little bit confused because I thought this was a horror novel, but it is being published by a fantasy sci-fi imprint. So I'm going to call it speculative fiction. It's a speculative fiction book about La Llorona. If you're unfamiliar by La Llorona, she, she is this mythical, vengeful ghost in Latinx or Latina culture. It's a story that a lot of Latinos growing up heard from their parents. They always told us about La Llorona and it would make us behave. So essentially, it's a vengeful spirit of a woman who drowned her kids when she was alive and then committed suicide. And based on the synopsis of The Haunting of Alejandra, it sounds like our main character will be possessed by the spirit of La Llorona. So I'm super excited to read this. I actually also have an advanced reader copy of this book. I will be reading it, potentially doing a vlog, um, and I will let you know all about it. So let's move on to our young adult books that are being released in the month of April. I do have three for you. The first one is being published on April 4th of 2023. This is An Appetite for Miracles by Liaken Sia Kempt. This is 448 pages long, published by Little Brown Books for Young Readers, and it is a YA contemporary romance. So in this young adult book, we are following Dona Mendoza Villarreal and Raul Santos, who are falling in love and helping each other get through difficult moments in their life. Actually, correction, her name is Dana, not Donna. So Dana's grandfather is slowly losing himself as his memories fade, and Dana's not sure how to help him remember, but she's trying to do so through food, which I will say, I feel like my most vivid memories are attached to food or smells. Raul Santos has been lost ever since his mother was wrongly incarcerated two years ago. Playing guitar for the elderly has been his only escape, but when his mother unexpectedly comes back into his life, what is he supposed to do when she isn't the same person who left? It sounds like a story that is going to deal with some heavy topics, but also pull at your heartstrings. The next book on this list will be published on April 11th of 2023. This is The Making of Yolanda la Bruja by Lorraine Avila. When I first read this title, for some reason I thought it was going to be about Yolanda, the woman who killed Selena, but it is not about that. So in this one, we are following Yolanda Alvarez, who is a Black Dominican teen, but she is also a bruja being raised by her bruja grandmother. Yolanda is still young but coming into her powers. She is a high school student in Bronx, New York, and when this white boy specifically comes into her high school, she starts to get vision that this particular boy is going to cause a lot of grief and a lot of violence at her high school, 
is she's trying to figure out how to prevent that from happening. Again, this is one that I think is going to lean on the heavier side or at least cover heavy topics. The author does talk about how this is in relation to school shootings, but one thing that I do like that she said is, despite the heaviness of this, the moments Yolanda spends with her community push the characters towards growth and joy. So even though it's going to cover heavy topics, I think it's going to end up on a positive note. So that is The Making of Yolanda la Bruja. The last and final book that I have for you will be published April 18th of 2023. This is called Wings in the Wild by Margarita Engel. It is at 224 pages and it is being published by Athenium Books for Young Readers and it is a young adult contemporary romance book and it looks like it is told in verse. So this one says, winged beings are meant to be free and so are artists but the Cuban government has criminalized any art that doesn't meet their approval. Soleda and her parents protest this injustice with their secret sculpture garden of chained birds, but then a hurricane exposes their art and her parents are arrested. So Soleda escapes to Central America alone, joining the thousands of Cuban refugees stranded in Costa Rica while seeking asylum elsewhere. There, she meets Daniel, a Cuban-American boy whose enigmatic music enchants birds and animals. Together, they work to protect the environment and bring attention to the imprisoned artists in Cuba. So a couple of things stand out from that synopsis. I think it's going to be a really cute romance, but also I like that they're talking about art. I feel like a lot of the books that I read don't deal with art specifically or paintings and it's also an immigration story right about the displacement of this young girl because her family was captured so I think this is going to be a really interesting one to check out and actually one that I might be interested in but I'll probably wait for reviews to come out to see if I will pick it up or not. So those were all of the books on my radar that are going to be published in the month of April by Latino, Latina, Latinx, or Latina authors. Let me know down below if you're interested in picking up any of these books. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you on the next one.